Thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring today's video. Check out the link below to learn more. All right, hey everyone. So recently I got the chance to go hands-on with Star Wars Outlaws, the upcoming open world Star Wars game from Ubisoft. I was able to play for a full four hours, checking out several different sections of the game, playing through a few story beats, exploring a couple of cities, flying through space, and doing some open world stuff because it is a Ubisoft game after all. But let's talk about what I saw. So the session began with us crash landing on Toshara, our ship in shambles. We were fortunate enough to run into a mechanic immediately upon opening our doors. Before we even finished introductions though, some bandits arrive and thus begins a tutorial. Now this doesn't appear to be the very beginning, the very start of the game however, as it wasn't the typical tutorial of learning how to walk, run, jump, crouch, and shoot. Instead, this was introducing me to the adrenaline system. So basically as you're engaged in combat, your adrenaline bar fills. And then once it is full, you can push in both thumbsticks to perform this adrenaline rush shots. This will slow down time for a few seconds and this lets you mark up to three enemies and then eliminate them one by one without the need for aiming. Now as this appeared to be the first time you were learning about adrenaline system there were only three targets but the mechanic turned out to be quite helpful later on as I got into fights against larger groups of enemies. Uh, with the bandits taken care of my new mechanic friend named Waka tells me that he can fix my ship for some credits but first he needs me to find a few parts. So I hop on my speeder and head towards a nearby city to see what I can find. In route riding through the open grassy fields of Toshara, which is described as this savanna moon shaped by strong winds, I see a suspiciously brightly colored ramp. Naturally, I launch myself off of it. Pretty aggressive, but a successful way of grabbing my attention. Designers, they did a good job. I was aware that that was a ramp, pretty obviously. Friends of the recently departed bandits track me down here, and this is when the game teaches me a few speeder tricks. So I get a boost that lets me gain some distance. There's all the left and right bumpers that let me quickly evade. But why do any of that? Because my adrenaline bar pretty much filled immediately when I was under fire, and then I dispatched of my pursuers without breaking a sweat. I mean, it slows down time and lets you mark the targets. It's about it, as easy as it could get. So shortly after that encounter, I arrive at the entrance of Mirogana. This is a densely packed city located at the base of this large rocky formation. Waka radios in and tells me that I need to search for some fuel injectors, and I'm then tasked with locating the local cantina. Strolling through the city's corridors, it all feels very Star Wars. I see a variety of life forms walking around, chatting, hanging out, and harassing each other. There are stormtroopers demanding identification. Uh, I was asked for mine. I gave them an ID card that absolutely didn't belong to me. I overhear conversations about hidden treasures, which then actually unlocked new side quests and objectives on my map. And on the way to the cantina, this guy offers to sell me a pass straight up to the VIP room, which is where I needed to go. Score. It was only 50 credits. Totally seemed worth it. At least it would have been if he hadn't sold me a fake pass. The bartender laughs and tells me that I got ripped off. The guy who sold me the thing runs away, so time to look for another way up. Uh, exploring around the cantina, I end up finding the service worker who's attempting to fix a broken control panel. I offer to help. She says, I don't know you. No, I bribe her. She says, yes, I remember you. Funny how that all works. Uh, I, I'm then given entrance into the maintenance room where there's a terminal to call down the VIP elevator. This is where I'm introduced to the hacking mechanic known as slicing. It's a pretty simple game of play Place these symbols in the correct order. You have to guess from a pool of options, and then the game tells you via color coding if you're correct or how far off you are. It's a pretty straightforward mini game, although it does get more complex as you progress through the game and as you come across more difficult to unlock areas with more glyphs to choose from and longer combinations to fill. Although also at the same time, there almost certainly will be unlocks that make this system easier as the game does have passive and active abilities uh, that you get as you progress, which we will get to. So I find the proper Combo, I call down the lift and head up to meet my first syndicate underboss. As the name alludes to, Star Wars Outlaws has you playing as an outlaw, a scoundrel to be specific, working with and against the several of the most wanted crime syndicates in the galaxy. So as you move through the game, you're introduced to these different syndicates, these different factions, and then depending on the choices you make and whatever is going to benefit you the most and whatever you're going for, uh, you will side with them accordingly. So my first meeting with the leader of the Pike syndicate doesn't go so well. I mentioned Waka sent me, the underboss didn't like that, and he immediately throws me out, although not before my furry companion steals his precious ring. Back down in the cantina, I am then introduced to a broker. These are neutral agents who offer jobs for the various syndicates in the game. Basically, they are side quest givers that play into the uh, syndicate reputation system. So here she tells me that there's a job to steal data from Gorak, that dude who just threw me out. So naturally, 
I say yes, and I head to the other side of town towards the Pike Syndicate's headquarters. Now, they won't just let me walk through the front door as I am currently in poor standing. There's a whole reputation system, and your reputation with the different syndicates will determine how they will interact with you when you are near them, and especially when you're walking into their base. So I can't go straight into the Pike Syndicate's headquarters. They don't like me. They don't know me. So I look around to try to find a nearby side entrance. I also then later learned that there were multiple ways to sneak into this territory and many of the territories in the game. The one that I first find though was a conveniently placed crawl space that dropped me off just behind the guards at the entrance. Nice. Uh, while in poor standing with a syndicate, if you are spotted in one of their bases, it counts as this like fail state and you're immediately thrown out. On the flip side though, whenever you raise your reputation with that syndicate, you can then freely walk around. It also seemed, at least from my limited time with the game, playing those four hours, that you can somewhat easily raise and lower your reputation by doing things like completing side quest. But yes, at that point in time, I was in poor standing with the pikes, so I had to stealthily move through their base. And there are a lot of different stealth mechanics, pretty standard stuff. So you can crouch and duck, duck behind objects, which will keep you hidden and out of view. There's an awareness meter that tells you if an enemy has been alerted to your, your position with the white, orange, and red gradients to tell you how aware they are. You've got several tools for sneaking around and distraction. There's a grapple hook that lets you climb or descend in specific locations. You can hang off the ledges and peek over the side. You've got a lock pick with its own match the beat mini game. And there are also various spots in the environment you can use to quickly duck out of sight like air vents and things of the like. And then you've got your companion, Nyx. Now he's got several abilities that basically amount to mess with the enemy or interact with that object. So you can have him straight up jump on the face of an NPC, harassing them for a few seconds until he gets thrown off. You can send him out to distract an enemy by feigning death directly in their line of sight, which will cause them to walk towards him. Super good for uh, sneaking past anyone guarding a particular spot that you need to get into. He's also got an area scan on a short cooldown that will highlight enemies, items, and interactable objects for a short time. And he can fetch items and consumables, not alerting guards even if he walks past them bringing them back to you and he can interact with certain switches levers and keypads while you stay hidden basically uh nyx acts as a second set of hands letting you do things while you're in one location in a separate location pretty good now if you do get caught which i did my first time sneaking around as i mentioned it was a fail state the guards yelled at you and then the screen fades to black and you're teleported to the entrance of the base although i should note this was only for these specific syndicate bases located inside of cities or any quest or objective that requires you to not get spotted. Beyond that, there are also other syndicate bases out in the open world. They might have a different name for these. Maybe they're called like outposts or something, but these locations function a lot more like traditional Ubisoft enemy camps. You can go in sneaking around, stealthily taking out enemies, or you can go in guns blazing. Either way, if you're seen, the enemies will just start attacking you. There's not this fail state where you're teleported out. It's just for these specific bits where it requires you to not get spotted for whatever reason, because it's a syndicate area inside of a city or because it's a mission that requires you to not get seen and sneak. Um, there's just circumstances where this is the case. So it was the case here and using all my stealthy tools, I eventually successfully sneak past the guards. In that process, I use Nyx to power off a security camera. I pick a few locks. I Ubisoft climb my way from one yellow painted ledge to another. I shut off a large fan to get through a vent. I grapple swing up to a ledge. And then this leads me further deep into that pike stronghold, eventually to the point where the stealth requirement gets lifted. I'm in this manufacturing portion of the base and I'm safe to start blasting. Now, my main goal in this area is to disable this energy barrier so I can make my way up into the pike boss's suite. First thing I do is pull out my binoculars and as expected, this lets me tag enemies to keep track of them while I'm moving around. I do decide to continue stealthing for a bit longer using Nyx to distract enemies while I sneak up and perform the good old sleeper hold. Uh, the environment is actually also full of various things you can interact and do things with, like there are booby traps you can set, there are reinforcement alarms that you can deactivate so the guards don't trip them, and there are objects that can be destroyed uh, as another means of distraction, like taking a plant thing and knocking it over, which distracts enemies and lets you sneak around or stealthily take them out. Now this goes well for a while, but eventually I am spotted after a failed chokehold attempt. Don't hit X too early, folks, that's a mistake. But rather than running back into hiding, I decide to take the rest of the base head on and calm 
combat here is pretty straightforward third person action shooting. You aim down sights, which pulls the camera close over the shoulder and gives you a better look at your target on the reticle. Your blaster does have an overheat mechanic, which forces you to sort of pace your shooting, having a nice tempo to it. There are grenades you can toss as well as explosive barrels you can shoot. There is melee brawling where you can punch and kick enemies. There's healing vials of which at the time I could carry two. These are found all over the place and they will also drop from enemies you take out. Some guards will run up to pull the alarms. Uh, this calls in reinforcements, although you can manually then shut them off to stop them from arriving. And certain enemies will even drop their weapons. Uh, these will have a limited amount of ammo before you are forced to toss them. But I found a few different types like semis, automatics, and sniper equivalent blaster weapons. Now, after eliminating all of the alerted guards, I make my way to the elevator, which brings me up to the tower into that underboss room. Here, I find and hack the terminal with the requested data that I was there to steal. This sets off another alarm, calling in some more guards. This time, they've got shields and forcing me to the backside of the base, climbing around the outskirts of the city by the landing pads. Lots of grapple traversal here, swinging myself over, uh, over ravines. Eventually, I arrive back near the city entrance where I first started. Now, on my way back to the cantina to turn in the quest, I actually at one point see a group of Pike soldiers running by, shouting about their base being attacked and how mad their boss is going to be. I then speak to the broker in the cantina and I learn at that point and uh, meet a uh, my quest contact, which was actually a member of an opposing syndicate, the Crimson Dawn. And this is where really the reputation system was introduced. So like I said, as you play through the game, you're playing as an outlaw, you're a scoundrel, and you have to make choices about which of the crime syndicates you want to side with because they're the ones on your side. So as you complete quests or you engage in things like open world activities, interacting with the various syndicates, depending on what you do, what you choose, this will raise or lower your reputation with each respective syndicate. So there are four syndicates that I saw. There was the Pike Syndicate and the Crimson Dawn. I was also later introduced to the Hut Cartel and the Ashiga Clan. And increasing your reputation with the syndicate also unlocks unique rewards for that syndicate. So it seems like there might be reasons to raise your reputation with one syndicate, get the rewards, and then lower your reputation with them to raise with another because there is a back and forth here between the syndicates. So in this particular case, having returned with that stolen data that they requested, I had a choice to make here. I could either hand that data over to the Crimson Dawn, as was my quest objective, or I could double cross, go to the Pikes and tell them that the Crimson Dawn were the ones responsible for attacking the base and stealing the data. Now, at this point, I actually decided to side with the Crimson Dawn, which then raised my reputation with them and lowered my reputation with the Pikes mission complete. Now, all told, from the start of my rundown to this point right now, this was about the first hour and a half of my playtime. For the remaining two and a half hours, here are some of the highlights and the things that I saw and did. I took another side quest from the broker Danka. This one had me stealing some parts, which uh, what was interesting here is I had the choice of either stealing them from the Pikes or from my new friends, the Crimson Dawn. Now, since the Pikes don't like me, pretty obvious what happens here. Stealing from their base requires me to sneak back in and avoid detection because they're not my friends. They specifically actually actively dislike me. However, stealing from the Crimson Dawn, I could just walk in the front door because we're in good standing, but the parts themselves are in a specific restricted area that does also require sneaking. And the issue here is if I get caught while sneaking into my new friend's base, I would then lose a tiny bit of reputation. It would have that fail state that would teleport me out of the restricted area and I would lose a small amount of my now good standing. I did that one time, failed, and then at that point, I just opted to steal from the Pikes instead because who cares? They already don't like me, right? Walking around the city a little more, eventually a messenger from the Hut Cartel introduces himself and he gives me a new mission. So there's a now third syndicate that I'm introduced to and can decide to interact with. After that point, I left the city to try to do some exploring of the open world, riding around on my speeder through these big open plains. Picking up the map revealed that it does appear to be a decently sized zone on this planet, but it looks to be just that like one space that you can explore with several sections to it. During the time exploring, I stumbled across a few things. There was this Imperial terminal guarded by three stormtroopers. Now I snuck around the back, took out the scout that was on the top, and then undetected by the two in the front, I hacked into the side door of the terminal building. Inside, I found some resources as well as a computer that I could slice and doing so successfully rewarded me some bonus credits. I found a Pike Syndicate base in the open world. Now, as I mentioned, if spotted 
spotted here, it's not that immediate fail state. Instead, they'll just start shooting you. At first, I took them head on for a little bit, taking out a few targets. I then left for a minute, dropping combat, and circled back around to sneak in, marked all of the visible targets with my binoculars, and then did the whole Ubisoft base clearing thing of stealthily eliminating enemies. Uh, using Nyx uh, plus stealth takedowns was super effective. In fact, I could, if there was a group of two, I could use Nyx to distract one, stealthily take out the other one, and then while that guy was still distracted, then stealthily take him out. It was super effective. While in this area, I searched through a stash house in the Pike base. There I found a bunch of different uh, loot, like, like there was consumables and resources. At one point, I also saw this like flying lizard creature just hanging out in an area. He was marked by this green indicator. Walking up to him, had him walk moving in a direction as I continue to follow eventually he revealed a hidden cache of items and currencies I then located another pike base this was called the pike workshop I actually had a side quest here to steal a vault key now this was one of those things that I picked up just by overhearing a conversation back in the city so I did some sneaking was eventually caught I then fought head-on making use of that adrenaline rush shot really good but before I finished exploring this area they actually had us move on to a different section of the preview and I'm glad they did because I actually got to see some more variety here. So I was sent back to my ship where I took off from the planet and headed out into space. Now leaving the planet was fairly automated. After pushing the button that says basically lift off, you get the short cinematic of a shot of your ship taking off from the pad, flying out over the planet and then leaving orbit. There's some very on brand Star Wars music playing for this bit as well. Now once you arrive in space, there is free movement. You're free to fly your ship around in any direction. You got a booster, you can shoot, you can scan. I flew towards my target which was a nearby debris field and specifically a station where I then docked and I was there to take a traitor into custody and return him to the pike boss Gorak. I am just double crossing working for everybody here. If you got credits I'm happy to be your pal right? <laughs> so I go into the station I find this guy named Tislak and we have a little conversation and at this point I'm given another option. I can either once again complete my mission as directed and turn him into the pikes or if I choose to let him go free, it will raise my reputation with the Crimson Dawn. Now, I was feeling feisty at this point, so I opted to just turn him into the Pikes anyways, which resulted in a shootout with the Crimson Dawn. Taking out Crimson Dawn agents uh, lightly lowered my reputation with them. I then loaded back into uh, into my ship, bringing Tislak with me, took off the station, and then on my way back to the planet, the Crimson Dawn then attacked me in ships. Blowing up their ships further lowered my reputation with the Crimson Dawn. Now, landing back on the planet looked like this. Uh, you just fly straight straight towards it. Eventually, once you get close enough, there will be a pop-up for picking your landing destination. So the three options were Mirogana City, or Wanta's Hope, and the Pike Poaching Station. Now, I only had the city available at the time. I hadn't unlocked the other two, and that's where I was heading anyway, so I selected that. But yes, there will be multiple landing destinations that you can pick from once you unlock them. Then you get another automated cinematic shot of you flying back down through orbit and landing at your destination, coupled once again with some nice Star Wars orchestral music. And then, yeah, I turn that guy into the pikes, lowering my reputation with the Crimson Dawn, but raising with the pikes. You can just yo-yo back and forth, apparently. Now, I'm sure there's like thresholds and eventually it gets really hard to go up or down with the various syndicate reputations. But regardless, that's what I was doing in my time with it, just to kind of feel these systems out. Now, for the final 30 minutes of my play session, I headed back into space, used a hyperdrive mechanic to jump to another system as I was tasked with heading to the snow-covered planet of Kajimi. Now, here I was introduced to yet another syndicate. They gave me a few different tasks. I had to explore the city. And this was all really cool, actually. It reminded me a bit of Skyrim, funny enough, uh, because it's all completely covered in snow. We've got these stone and brick streets and buildings, everything lit with torches and small alleyways. It all felt like very medieval times, and I just really enjoyed it. I did several side and main uh, quests here, moving around the city, exploring, sneaking, talking to NPCs, stealing things, taking out targets. It was all really, really neat. So while here, I also did some time digging through the game's customization and progression menu use and here's what I found. So there's vehicle upgrades and uh, customization. You can get upgrades for the various parts to improve, making them better for the handling of the speeder, the engine, the handling, the armor, etc. There appear to be two to three unlock levels for each of these. There was also appearance skins for like paint jobs and trinkets. And then the trailblazer, which is your flying spaceship, it also had upgrades and customization. You could upgrade the weaponry, defense, and uh, propulsion systems. There were three to upwards of seven unlocks for each of these categories. It also had appearance with cosmetics 
cosmetics available for paint and fuel color. There's the whole equipment section. So you've got your loadout, which begins with clothes. There are three gear slots. Some gear even comes with perks, things like reduced damage, regen health, increased ammo capacity, carry more consumables, increased accuracy, move speed, all sorts of different things to improve your character. There is also two charm slots that have their own perks like increased health, stealth takedowns, grant more adrenaline, increased blaster damage, and more. Nyx had his own visual customization. For blasters, there were different attack speeds and strength configurations you could do, multiple options for plasma, ion, power, and stun attacks. There was cosmetics here as well. And then you've got your tools, which you unlock as you progress through the game. And these, uh, it's sort of like Metroidvania style, they let you do more mechanics, interact with more things. So there's stuff like the grapple hook, the flashlight, the healing vials, the binoculars, the lockpick, the stun gun, and the smoke bomb. That's what I had unlocked. There were four additional tool slots still available that I hadn't found. And for your inventory, you've got materials, valuables, quest items, and key parts, all for crafting, customization, and or selling. And then there is the character progression outside of gear as there are abilities. As you move through the game, you meet these people called experts who can train you in different active and passive skills, which you then unlock by completing challenges for each active or passive ability. So it uh, tasks you with like sneaking around and taking out enemies from stealth, and that's going to unlock one of the specific skills from one of the experts. So the three experts that I had seen in my session and the night that I had skills unlocked for, there was Bram the bartender who taught you melee brawling, lock picking, fast talking, which was a distract, gave you bonus health and unlock specific side quests. Rovac the mechanic gave you upgrades for your speeder boost and speed for treasure finding, the smoke bomb and increased consumable capacity. And then there was Bren the slicer who taught you hacking, gives stealth bonus damage, the stun grenade, traps, bonus to it, your stealth and slicer enhancements. And those were again, just a few of the experts that I found. There was more than three. I think there were somewhere around eight. I didn't count off the top of my head and I don't have it in front of me, but yes, there was somewhere like eight or nine experts that you could learn from. And that pretty much my, my concluded my time with the game. Those four hours really flew by. Overall, I enjoyed what I saw. I, I didn't feel like it was just the typical Ubisoft open world formula. And I think largely because it wasn't just one open world space, but rather a bunch of separate areas and some open world planet side sections as well. Mainly those open fields was like the only truly open world section I saw. And I only spent about an hour there. I am very curious how big the game is overall, how much of the traditional open world sections are included for people who still like going through that stuff. I like clearing camps of enemies, so I hope there is a significant portion of that. But also there's a lot of this cl very clearly siloed, more story focused and contained areas, which I think people will find as a nice change of pace from again, what is the typical Ubisoft open world formula. This isn't really that. It's a bunch of different areas that you're moving between going to with these open world sections, at least from what I saw, confined to these specific planet side locations, but then you're focused on specific areas within or you're flying to areas which are their own instance siloed confined areas as well. It all felt very Star Wars and overall I did enjoy it, but again, it was just four hours. It did go by pretty quick and I feel like there's still a lot more playing for me to do before cementing my final thoughts. And then of course also, this is just a preview for the game and thanks again to Ubisoft for sponsoring today's video. Hopefully that give you, gave you a good overview of what I saw. That's pretty much everything that I have to say about it. If you want to learn more and check out the game for yourself, Star Wars Outlaws, there's a link in the description below. Thanks again. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.